Okay, so here is the last question. 17 minutes I have on this. So, in an experiment, determine this is June 2018, paper 2, question 1. In an experiment to determine the focal length of a convex lens, a group of fifth form students set up the apparatus shown in figure 1. And so the students measured object distances U and corresponding image distances V and recorded the information in the table. So this is what I recorded 20, 30, 40. This is set, and this is the one that they were looking at. So basically, they wanted to write down what the units would be in here. Since this is in centimeters, then the unit would be 1 over centimeter. And the same thing for here. Then, they want you to calculate what would be in here. And say so we put 1 over each of these numbers. These boxes correspond to this. So whatever this is telling you to do, you will do it in here. Okay? So the first one... And they also said, there's a complete table one to show values of 1 over u and 1 over v. Include units and calculate the 3 sig fig. So, you had to include the units, which is this, and then you had to do 3 sig fig, not include the units all the way down, it's already up here. So, the first number was 0 0.5, 0, 0, sorry, 0 0.0500. And how did I do that? I get the calculator and it's um, 1 divided by 20, 0 0.05, and I added the extra two zeros to make it 3 sig fig. And you just continue throughout. So I'm going to do um, the next side to make it even. So 1 divided by 55.6. And I will give you 0 0.0180. Because this will bump up this to 8. You can't put 1.01798 because then this will bump up this again and this. So you just want to end it early. So it's a 0 0.0180. And that's what we do for this side as well. 1 over that, 1 over that, 1 over that. And so it would end up getting this eventually we'll end up getting these numbers so this is pre-done so you get these numbers and these numbers right here then they said on the grid provided on page 5 plot a graph of 1 over u against 1 over v so on the grid you would have had to make um, the proper calibrations. But what I usually tell children is to make sure you read the entire question because sometimes it will tell you, oh, um, where does the line pass through this? Where does where does the line pass through X? Where does the line pass through Y? And then if you make if you make your um, axes too wide or too large, then you will have to go back and waste time to rub out to redo your graph and you don't really want to do that and that was the case with this because this said calculate the gradient of the graph in b to one sig fig fine then they said state the value of the intercept c on the one over u axis which means they have to carry back the graph which means the graph has to be um neat enough for you to do that because if you make a white a wider if you make too wide of a um, calibration, if you put this as two, um, because what I did, what I did, I did every two, right? And you could actually achieve every four to get a big graph. If you get a big graph, then you won't, it wouldn't pass. It would be, it would be too low. So you would have to do over the whole graph so that it could intercept. So what I did, I did zero, and then every two. That is 0 0.0100. And I made sure to put back my points because CXC can get very touchy feely about certain things. And you really don't want to fall in the bad books. You want to just get your points, get your one, get your two, get your three, 
you want to just pass and not have to do this stuff over again because trust me when you start to work when you start to go to six farm this is not this is not something you want to have on your mind you kind of want to just be out of this bracket because you want to have a happy life you know, physics is fun but not that fun and then i would do the same thing every two i would do the same thing right and so what would happen is that i would end up with a graph that looked like this and i wasn't gonna plot that whole graph so end up with a graph like this and i make sure i put my i make sure i label my axes one over v one over centimeter and i put my units label my axis here and I made sure it was neat enough so that when they actually were intercept I would be able to do it right and so they actually gradient and I picked two points on the line and I made sure I covered all the points that were in here as you can see the best the best fit declining line and so I picked this point I pick a point where that was crossed not in between any spaces but where two lines were crossed in our meeting I picked that point and I pick a point here and I label this point two and I label this point one. I made pretty sure to make sure what I had was correct. And so, because each one in here, each point in here is 0 0.001. Yeah, so this would be 0 0.001 going right up. So this would be 0 0.011, you know, as you go on. So it was easy for me to plot even though it was three sig fig. Okay, and so when I plot it, I end up getting end up using these um, coordinates, y2 equal to 0 0.005. And you go across here, 0 0.005. And remember this if this is 0 0.01, it can't be 0 0.05 here. So 0 0.005, 1 over centimeters, and x was 0 0.0610. And I made sure to be um, keen about the, um, just, well, not here, but, you know, I just wanted the decimal places to match back. It's not matching back here. I probably got tired somehow. And this is, since I made sure this was at the zero map because I got fed up of counting. So Y1 was zero and, sorry, X1 was zero because it come down here. And Y1 was 0 0.0680. So 0 0.069 right here. So this is 8 right there. And I use those numbers to determine my gradient. <coughs> so here, I was able to say that uh, Y1 delta the, the, the gradient is equal to delta y over delta x which is equal to y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 how you could put y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 either way is fine just make sure your numbers correspond so if you start with a 2 in the y section you must start with it the 2 in the x section and i just put back my numbers that i have on my graph because it's easier when you write them out and not to have to flip over and write because you're gonna get mixed up so you write them out on the graph and then you neatly write them back here and I end up getting a negative number card the graph is going downwards and they said to one sig fig so to one sig fig I got negative one then this is state value of the intercept so the value of the intercept based on where the line cut the y-axis and this is where you cut the y-axis at 0 0.0680, 1 over centimeter, or per centimeter. <coughs> and I just wrote it back here. Then from there, given that C is equal to 1 over F, determine F, the focal length of the lens. So if we have C from the graph, and C is equal to 1 over F, it's simple transposition, then therefore F will be equal to 1 over C. And you get, after doing all this calculation, you get 14.7. I don't want to, I don't want what happened on question 6 happen on question 1. So I'm going to calculate it to make sure I calculated cleanly, or at least I recorded properly because that's what happened. I didn't record properly. 
14.73 and they didn't ask for any decimal places but this would be approximately equal to 15 centimeters and there you have it i hope this gives you some oh oh i didn't finish yet oh boy this question was pretty trying so that was that for that question for that set and then we move on to this last question that i had to just drop in here so they said figure two complete figure two to show the parts of rays one two and three as a pass through the convex lens represented by the dotted line. So instead of giving you um, rays that are parallel, in terms, not these are parallel, but instead of giving you rays that are conventionally straight across the paper, they went and give you them on a slanted, um, a slightly different angle, it's a slant towards the optical center. All you had to do was draw a straight line using a ruler. You draw a dotted line down here and you make sure you use your ruler to carry this straight across this line. Wherever this hit the line, you just continue with this to meet it there and continue with this to meet it here. I didn't use a ruler because <coughs> my hand holding the 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 camera phone the phone. So the one with the ruler on this end will be this. So you just make sure you extend the middle line first because you always pass through the optical center and you make sure you draw your, your dotted line so that you know where to stop the ray at this point and then from the ray 3 you just ray 3 and ray 1 you just draw them towards the point of convergence and that will be it so i have a little note here now so parallel rays focus on the focal plane even if they are not parallel to the principal axis right so that's what i wanted you to do so i hope that that is what you did or something close to it anyway good luck peace out hope you did well on your exam i really do i hope you at least get a one a two or a three and yes threes are passes you'll be glad if you get a three instead of a four if you ever do get a three good luck have a great night